Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. Thank you for joining me today. In the last episode, I presented the importance of getting and keeping our bodies physically active. Well, today's episode may seem like a contradiction as I will be sharing step number seven, the importance of rest. The Bible speaks quite often of rest. In fact, the theme is repeated throughout the scriptures over and over, beginning with creation. Genesis 2-2 tells us that on the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And then he lovingly gives us instructions to also rest weekly from our work. Today, it is more important than ever that we learn to rest. You know, at one time, getting married, changing jobs, buying a house, raising a children, getting an education, dealing with the death of a loved one, or suffering chronic illness were all considered the common stressors of the day. But today, on top of all of these, a whole new crop of social stressors have been added to our everyday lives. With technology literally at our fingertips, we have constant access to the evils of society, as well as local, national, and even global crises that compound the once normal stresses of life. Stress was rarely mentioned when I was growing up, but today it's often a common household word, and finding relief from that stress is a growing concern. You may be asking what this has to do with healthy living. Well, stress has been linked to all of the leading causes of death, including heart disease, cancer, lung issues, accidents, and of course, suicide. Some experts now speculate that as much as 70 to 80% of all disease and illness are stress-related. Statistics from the American Institute of Stress states that 43% of all adults suffer adverse health effects due to stress, and that 80% of all visits to primary care physicians are for stress-related complaints or disorders. Technological advances that were supposed to help us get our jobs done more quickly seem to have actually brought more stress and time constraints into our lives, as we can now work long hours and even carry our work with us wherever we go. But God knew all along what our bodies needed and gave us instructions about rest. So today, just as mentioned in the last episode about exercise, that we have to search for ways to exercise. I called it search for work. We now have to surely search for rest. The Bible instructs us of a weekly rest We do not just deserve a break today, as a popular commercial declares. We actually need a rest. In the fall of 2019, my husband Brad and I had the wonderful privilege of visiting Israel. We went as a part of a 10-day tour, so of course our time there fell on a Sabbath day. Our tour went on as planned, and our stop for the day included a trip to Gideon's Spring. This is the spring that's mentioned in Judges chapter 7, where God separates out the 300-man army that will fight with Gideon against the Midianites. That spring today is surrounded by a beautiful park. As mentioned, it was a Sabbath day in Israel, and I will never forget seeing the families 
with blankets spread on the ground for a picnic surrounded by their children, enjoying a beautiful day of rest. As I was returning to our bus, I overheard a group of children singing Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, the traditional Jewish Sabbath greeting in Hebrew. But in the Jewish tradition, these two words are more than just a greeting. It is an implied blessing saying, may your day of no work be peaceful. May you become whole and restored during your ceasing from laborious work. And the belief is that it's not a matter of keeping the Sabbath, but of the Sabbath keeping you. It is not my intent in this podcast to have a theological discussion here about the laws and rules of keeping the Sabbath, only to share how important it is to pull away at least one day a week for a break from our day-to-day struggles and work, and simply let it go. Not to focus on what we can't do on our day of rest, but what we can do. Read a book, go for a walk, visit with friends and family with no guilt about the work we need or think we should be doing. A few weeks ago, I had a very stressful week. I was working under some deadlines that I had to meet. I had worked really hard all day Monday and all day Tuesday, but I did not quite meet my goal of completion. I was discouraged and stressed and actually felt like giving up on creating this very podcast. I was determined to press through on Wednesday, but it was more of an obligation than a desire. The thoughts of quitting this project were forefront in my mind. But I felt God lead me to just rest that day instead of finishing the podcast. So I did. I caught up on some reading. I took a walk and a nap. I did not let deadlines, guilt, or even fear suck me into working that day. I can tell you this. I woke up Thursday morning refreshed and inspired and ready to write and record. It was a beautiful lesson in trusting God to provide what I needed through rest. I have often considered how many of us hate Mondays because we neglected to find rest and relaxation and fellowship over the weekend. It may take some planning or just sheer determination to set boundaries for working, both on a weekly basis as well as a daily basis set limits, set a starting time, and perhaps even more importantly, set a stopping time, even if the project is not completed. And if there's an exceptional reason to work overtime, which in reality will happen sometimes, plan a day of rest soon. It saddens me to realize that according to a 2012 survey, one out of three Americans do not use all of their vacation time And one out of five cited work-related pressure and responsibility as the number one reason for canceling their vacation. I can only imagine what that statistic might be today. Now, besides a weekly rest, there is another rest that must be mentioned here, and that is the daily rest. We have two tiny glands known as the hypothalamus and the pineal gland that govern our body's daily biological clock. Light-sensitive nerve cells in the retina of the eye signal the pineal gland, telling the gland if it is day or night. Our bodies need these signals to know when to synchronize different physiological activities. For example, when the eye senses diminishing light, such as sundown, it will signal the pineal gland to make melatonin. Melatonin is the hormone that gets the body ready for sleep, and it starts a cascade of important hormonal events that take place during the night while we sleep. I wonder, perhaps, if this is one reason why on a dark, dreary, rainy day, we are more inclined to want to curl up with a good book or an old movie and our favorite hot beverage than to do much work. 
But melatonin does more than help us sleep. It has a strong antioxidant activity. It lowers our body temperatures at night and reduces our appetite. These are all things that promote good sleep and restoration. Now, one of the biggest disruptors of this natural biological clock is light late at night, especially the light from computer screens and cell phones. So working late into the night can actually disrupt the signal to make melatonin, contributing to more than just poor sleep, but poor energy and even delayed healing and even weight gain. Making a habit of late night working can lead to not only stress, but also poor health. So setting a stopping time is critical to finding rest and relieving stress. Conversely, the pineal gland is also responsible for waking us up in the morning when the sun comes up or light hits the nerve cells in the retina of our eye. The pineal gland is again signaled, but this time to release the hormone cortisol, which energizes our bodies and tells us it's time to wake up. Our biological clocks tell us more than when to wake up and when to sleep. They actually regulate our energy production as well as our digestive systems. When we eat late at night or just before bed, the body has to stop this sleep cycle and now focus on digestion. While we sleep, the body is in healing and repair mode. We release a hormone known as human growth hormone or HGH at the onset of deep sleep. When this phase gets disrupted by now having to digest food, our production of HGH is greatly diminished. In adults, HGH helps maintain our muscles and our bones, helps break down fat, and helps maintain adequate energy levels and even slows the aging process. Our brain is also at work cleaning up our negative thoughts and memories from the day. There is a reason the first meal of our day is called breakfast or break fast. And for good health and healing, we need to give our bodies the daily rest it needs by setting boundaries on our daily work and our eating. Now with life, there are always exceptions. There is probably not a single person listening that has not had to pull an all-nighter or work on what should be our day of rest, and no one needs to feel guilty. Even Jesus rebuked the Pharisees by saying, sometimes you just have to get your ox out of a ditch, even on the Sabbath. But hopefully, as we continue on our journey to live a more healthy life, these will become exceptions and not the rule. For after all, why do we even want to have a more healthy life? Is it just so we do not get sick as often or that we don't succumb to the common diseases that plague most Americans? Are we striving out of fear to avoid the big three, cancer, heart disease, and diabetes? Living is about more than just staying alive and not being sick. Living is about fulfilling the purposes for which we were created. Jesus said that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy, but that he has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We must be careful then to not let the thief rob us of our rest. I've shared previously one of my favorite quotes about food, that eating great food, no matter how simple or elaborate, should be one of life's greatest pleasures and not an endless guilt trip. And so should it be with resting. No guilt, just some of your greatest pleasures. When you set aside time to rest, do not let guilt rob you of your peace. You might be tempted by such thoughts. I can't afford to take this time off. I should be working. I should be doing laundry. I should be cleaning the house. But on this day... You can boldly say with no guilt, not this day or this hour 
or this evening, I should be resting. Rest is often defined as peace, ease, and refreshment. May you have that today as you find your rest. Thank you for listening. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.